नमस्कार सबा के सबाई इतिम्य अवगत हो प्रातन मुख्यमंत्री सभा श्रद्धे गुरुदेव भट्टाचार्य महाशय आज सकाले अमृत रोग जाना कर आज के लेकर शुरू प्रथम विदेही आत्मार चेह शांति कमना कर एक निरवता पालन करब तक सबाई के Today, 8th August, on this very day in 1942, our great father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, launched the Quit India Movement, which is a civil disobedient movement demanding an end of the British era in India. First, we are paying due honor to this great soul. Gandhi's association with a field-based research is significant. He is very fond. of experimental learning to real world he is a great practitioner of several field based research initiative including village surveys experiments in self sufficiency agricultural research social and economic experiments etc today our honorable speaker our gurudev professor acharya will illumine us on the importance of field based research in english studies
Now it's the time for the welcome address and I request our Honorable Principal Sir, Dr. Ravi Khadikar to give the welcome note. Good afternoon, Honorable Principal Bona, faculty members and students. It is my pleasure to welcome you all in today's lecture on the importance of this research in English study. You are fortunate to have the esteemed speaker like Professor Acharya, who is a professor at the Department of English with the Sabah University. You are very much thankful to you for accepting our invitation. Professor Acharya is a highly accomplished individual in the field of literature of the marginalized Dalit and driver in translation. In today's globalized world, where cultural and linguistic boundaries are increasing today and field based research become a vital tool. It essences our ability to analyze, interpret, and contribute to the ongoing dialogue around language and literature in a meaningful way. As we explore into the vital topic, we must recognize that English studies extend our far beyond the limit of the classroom and pages of textbook. I hope today's lecture will explore the benefits, challenges, and best practices of the field-based research in English studies. I invite you to engage actively, ask questions, and share your experience. Let us embark on this intellectual journey together today. Thank you all. He has successfully completed one English minor research project entitled Black Words, White Page, a historical and critical survey of contemporary Aboriginal fiction of Australia in the year 2008. One English major research project entitled Documentation, Translation and Analysis of Bengali Folk Drama in the Context of Endangerment in the year 2015, and one UGC innovative research project titled Colonial to Post-Colonial, Revisiting the Cultural Cartographies of Adivasi Communities in West Bengal in the year 2017. He has also served in the capacity of Deputy Coordinator in the UGC SAP Phase 3 DIS-1 project till 2020-2013, and as a field investigator in the UGC SAP 3 DRS 2 project during 2015 to 2020. He had also been a visiting professor in the Department of English, University of Delhi in 2019 to 2020 academic session. He has been graced with People's uh, Linguistic Survey of India Felicitation by the Bhasa Research and Public Center, Baroda, in 2017. And uh, he has received excellence in book production for the volume Postumonghe Bhasha. Even he was given second prize by the Federation of Indian Publishers, New Delhi, in 2017. And excellence in book production for Sriti Dilope Pore. He was given second prize in the regional language category by the Federation of India, Indian Publishers, New Delhi, in 2018. Some of his major publications are Beyond the Sense of Belonging, Race, Belonging, Race, Class and Gender, in the poetry of Yates and Elliot, published by SSS Publication in 2011, Survival and Other Stories, Anthology of Bangla Golden Stories, published by Orient Black Swan in 2012, Many Colored Glass, 
published by Macmillan in 2013, Towards Social Change, Essays on Dalit Literature, published by Orient Platform in 2014, Listen to the Flames, Takes Fan Readings from the Margins, published by Oxford University Press in 2016, Hosting Mountain Bhasha, published by Orient Black Swan in 2017, Sridi Bilobe Pore, Translation of GN Babies, After Amnesia, published by uh, Orient Black Swan in 2017, The Languages of West Bengal, published by Orient Black Swan in 2019, Mahatma Gandhi in Bangla, published by Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan in 2022, Geographical Imaginations, Literature and its Special Term, published by Oxford University Press in the year 2022. The Among Flowers and Other Stories, published by Orient Black Swan in 2022. And Writings from Sundarbans, published by Orient Black Swan in 2023. And Selected Writings of Omni Ghorai, the Literature from Bangla, published by Ruth Lynch in 2023. Professor Acharya has published 40 articles, more than 40 articles and book chapters in related journals and edited books, respectively. He has delivered more than 75 national and international invited lectures in offline and online mode. He has been engaged in translation collaboration projects with Center for Translation of Indian Literatures, Department of Comparative Literature, Jadavpur University, Linguistic Research Unit, Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, North Bengal University, Kalyani University, Alia University, and Central Institute of Indian Languages, Mysore. Professor Acharya has supervised 11 awarded PhD scholars. He has served as a member of coordinator and chairperson of the peer team for the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC, Government of India. In the year 2023, Professor Acharya was nominated as a member of the jury for the selection of Science Academy Yuba Puraskar. Professor Acharya has recently been awarded the Fulbright Nehru Academic and Professional Excellence Fellowship in the 2024-25 cycle. His, his host institution is the University of Wisconsin Madison, United States of America, and he has been affiliated to the Center for South Asia of the University. I will be leaving for this institution uh, in this month, late in this month. With these words, I have the honor to introduce Professor Acharya to all of you. Welcome. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my regards to the principal of this college and also the other faculty members in the Department of English, the head of the department and other colleagues. Some of them are also my students and research scholars. So I had visited this college earlier, I think twice or thrice. And each time uh, I had a very good experience of interacting with the students, uh, teachers, and other members of this institution. And I have many fond memories of this college. I distinctly remember the organization of a workshop uh, sometime in 2013 uh, uh, when uh, we actually interacted with some of the members of the indigenous communities. Uh, one was from Mahali community, Gopinath Mahali, I remember him. And we had a very fruitful session uh, during that visit. Uh, we were actually collecting documents for the People's Linguistic Survey of India project. Uh, and uh, my student and scholar, Kobu, is present here, uh, who had also been a co-author in the production of the chapter on Mundari language. Uh, we published Pushkin Mongir Bhasha as a result of that project, People's Linguistic Survey of India. Kodu was a co-author and it was also available in English translation, uh, the language of the West Bengal. Uh, so uh, there are people who have directly or indirectly contributed to the making of these volumes, uh, people who are 
Department Council of this college, uh, Shobhan is there, Aarup is there, uh, Shujata is there. Okay, all of them are very familiar to me and very close to my heart. So it's a, a sort of homecoming for me. Uh, today uh, we actually had a long session uh, on the upcoming Nagpia team visit to your college. So we had a very engaging discussion with the IQSC members in the presence of the principal of this college are here and uh, I always feel that time's winged chariot is hurrying near and uh, we are all driven by the dictates of time. Time is the essence of you know, any visit, any relationship, any contract, anything under the sun. So time is uh, the most precious thing. Uh, but when I talk about this uh, topic of today, the, the importance of the field visit, field-based research in English studies. So why do we call it English studies instead of terming it as English? Okay, that is a big question mark. Okay, so I will be you know, uh, dwelling on the basic connotations of certain words that are used in the title itself. Why English studies? Why not English? Because you have noticed very recently the Department of English, Vidya Sagar University, has changed the nomenclature of the department. Okay, it happened during a meeting of our department and committee uh, when I was the head of the department. In fact, we received some suggestions from some premier institutes like the Indian Statistical Institute, Linguistic Research Unit, Comparative Literature Department, Jadavpur University, and some other departments of language and cultural studies within and outside West Bengal. What was the suggestion? That they advised us to change the name of the department so as to make it inclusive of many projects and researches which we have been conducting in certain areas which do not strictly fall under the discipline of English. In fact, you may read one essay on the abolition of the English department by who was the author? By I think Bugi Vathiyamwe who and Bugi was the author on the abolition of the Department of English. So if you read that essay, you will find how the movement of decolonization was initiated in the African continent with a great vigor and mass support. How intellectuals like Chinua Achibi and Bugi Vathiyango and many others actually wrote and participated in the people's movement to decolonize Africa from the impact of the Europeans. Africa became the heart of darkness. You are familiar with that novel by Joseph Conrad. So Africa became a popular destination for the colonizers, European colonizers and it had to bear the white man's burden for a long period of time. So it was, you know, towards you know, the beginning of the 20th century, especially during the middle of the 20th century, that there was a new consciousness, you know, which inspired the African writers to take up kajals against the evils and excesses of the colonialism. So, the colonial movement was essentially a response to the excesses of colonialism. But the excesses of colonialism were immediately addressed by post-colonialism. But once again, no, post-colonialism continued certain trends and features of the colonial era which were devoid of the actual cultural situation of the colonized countries. So, decolonizing 
is different from post-colonial responses. Because decolonizing is essentially removing all the traces of colonial culture from the academia, from the cultural sphere, from the linguistic sphere, from the social sphere, from every sphere of life. So the movement at decolonization was definitely a starting point for the indigenization of the curriculum and also the cultural mindset of the colonized people. So decolonization in a big way you know, advocates the idea of indigenization, the idea of localization, the idea of making the local global. So if you look at the research profile of many major universities across the globe, you will find that there is a sustained and renewed emphasis on the exploration of the linguistic, literary and cultural heritage of the third world countries, especially countries with huge indigenous populations. I attended one conference at Lancaster University in the United Kingdom where I found that 50% of the papers presented in the international conference were upon the language, culture and literature of the northeastern part of India. Northeast, okay, which houses many tribal communities. It also included papers on the indigenous communities in Nepal, in Bhutan, in Tibet and also in some other neighboring states. So you can easily find out how the first world academia was focusing on the third world academia with special reference to the indigenous language, literature and culture. So English studies is now a name for an interdisciplinary pursuit of research and development. So when I put it as English studies in the plural, okay, I am emphasizing the element of interdisciplinarity. Interdisciplinarity in the sense that English studies not only contains the traditional British and American literature, not even the new literatures, but also no, literature in English translation. Literature in translation, particularly Bhasha literatures, regional language literatures in English translation. So what we are actually aiming at no, is to translate especially the Dalit and tribal no, literary traditions of the Indian subcontinent and also the other continents where there are uh, major footprints of the indigenous populations. So remember that the new name of our department is English Language Literature, English Literature, Language and Cultural Studies. So we are not merely studying literature, we are also studying language and we are also studying cultural studies. So when we talk about field-based research, we are actually into cultural studies. Because cultural studies is a major component of English studies. Film studies is part of the cultural studies. Theatre studies is part of cultural studies. Media studies is part of cultural studies. Okay, so if you look at the different sub-domains of English studies, you find that they all relate to the basic concept of cultural studies. So what we are doing is actually collaborating with various disciplines, various subjects, 
no various cultures okay. for example when we talk about field based research we are immediately referring to social and cultural anthropology why because anthropology is a new science which mostly depends upon field based research okay. you can talk to any one of your friends in the anthropology department you will find that physical anthropology social anthropology cultural anthropology various branches of anthropology are heavily dependent upon field based research we are also closely connected to the subject of sociology because if you talk to any student of sociology you will find that field based research is very important in sociology Okay, we are also connecting with other departments, you no, know, like history. You no, know, history also depends on ethnographic research. Ethnography is part of the study of ancient history, particularly ancient history. And another sister discipline of history is archaeology. Okay, even in archaeology, you will find a great importance of field-based research. So. field is important for many disciplines even we are connected to the subjects like bangla you know santali and others okay in bangla a major specialization is in folklore studies okay. you will find that bangla departments also have folklore museum so why do they develop folklore museum why because they want to preserve the past dying cultures of the indigenous people okay, the local culture the marginalized culture okay, the endangered culture okay, so there is always an attempt to museumize the perishing cultures the vanishing cultures only through a very intensive field based research Okay. so my first point was to explain the english studies and english studies did not earlier have any idea of field based research you will be surprised to know that the proposal to introduce field based research first came in england in the united kingdom around 2003 2004 when the humanities research board for the first time recommended the importance of field based research projects for what for funding for research grants earlier in english there was no concept of field study there was no concept you no know, research was conducted through a visit to the library and archive and also consulting secondary materials of course the primary materials were there texts were there but research was mostly confined to the consultation of the secondary materials available in the libraries and archives and there was also a notion in english studies that there should be a communication a bonding between the research supervisor and the scholar okay as if you know it was a kind of transmission of knowledge system from the supervisor to the scholar so there were certain very traditional ideas which operated the entire mechanism of research determine the mechanism of research say up to the end of the 20th century but at the beginning of the 21st century we find that the humanities research board and different arts and humanities research projects they made it abundantly clear that field based research is essential now why was it essential it was essential to reconnect the scholars to the literary and cultural heritage 
of his own society, of his own neighborhood, of his own ecosystem. So there was a renewed emphasis upon the folklore, upon the folk tradition, no, upon the knowledge system, okay, the Indian knowledge system, no, which is found in the folk societies, in the rural societies, especially in the oral communities. That is, many indigenous communities do not have any writing system. They do not have any script. They are absolutely oral. As you know, our Vedas were, that's why Vedas were known as Sruti. Okay. So they were transmitted through Mimini, from one generation to another. So if you visit the folkloric traditions of our own culture, or maybe of our neighboring culture, that is the culture which is practiced and sustained by various indigenous communities, you will find the role of memory and performance. Memory and performance are the two important aspects of the folk heritage, of the folk culture. If you watch any, any folk play, any folk performance okay, in any village festival, okay, it may be a Chorok festival or a Gajon festival or anything, okay, you will find that the Palagans, the Palagans are performed orally and in most of the cases, in fact in all the cases, there were no scripts. Later what happened that the recorded performances were transcribed and then translated into other languages. But they didn't have any scripts for their performance. So what happened that memory was retained by the next generation, subsequent generation and that memory was the only storehouse for the performance of any padaga, any legend, any myth, any part of epic, anything. In fact, if you look at the tradition of oral epics of India, you will find that many tribal communities have many interesting oral epics. And those oral epics often you know, overlap with our most important and most representative epics like Ramayana and Mahabharata. Okay, Ramayana and Mahabharata. For instance, Birhod. Birhod is a primitive tribal group or a vulnerable tribal group. Okay, but the Birhods have their own version of Ramayana, which is known as Birhod Ramayana. And if you watch Birhod Ramayana, you will find that both Rama and Sita are forest dwellers. Lakshmana is also a forest dweller. And Bir Hod actually means what? People. Hod means man. And Bir means forest. Okay, so man of the forest. So they are all forest tribes, Bir Hod. And you will find that Rama and Sita are also, they are forest tribes. And they are part of the forest tribe. And Lakshmana is there. And Sita is trying to, you know, leave. And uh, Chihod Lata, okay, a very popular, you know, uh, tree in the Birhod settlement. The Chihod Lata is holding Sita back, okay, pulling back her sari. Okay, and she can't move. Okay, so you will find that how the mainstream epics are internalized, okay, assimilated and integrated to the tribal culture. So this is a very interesting dialogue between the mainstream and the margin. And it shows how the mainstream was a construct and the margin was also a construct. Okay, as if there was no okay, divisive you know, concept, there was no border between the mainstream and the margin at one point of time. Okay, when the epics existed 
without any you know hierarchies without any categorizations of upper caste and lower caste so there was a continuous dialogue there was a continuous you know osmotic relationship between the so called upper class and the so called lower class okay so there was transfer of knowledge there was you know adaptation of new culture adaptation to rather new culture and new practices so it happened it happened virod ramayana is there similarly mundari mahabharata is also there there is a version of mahabharata by enacted by the mundari people you will find a, a story there is an entire story okay how mundas okay imagine okay, the different systems of war lords the feudal lords and how they fight against one another okay and how that fight becomes a microcosmic representation of the battle of kurukshetra so that is found in mundari mahabharata okay so basically field based research is to visit the cultural sites okay sites which are still the dominant ground for the enactment of different types of cultural material so different types of cultural material and you are residing in the field itself field itself means you are not outside generally the concept of field okay is a romantic one romantic in the sense that it is mostly the urban city dwellers okay, students of urban colleges and universities who are going to visit a distant exotic remote place known as field so they consider themselves to be adventurers who are going to enter into the heart of darkness so people a tribal people with different language different culture different social practices and different color of the skin different appearance okay will appear before them okay, a very formidable presence no like the novels with the red indians we have read like the last of the mohicans okay people will come out and you know tribal people you know they are like cannibals okay they might attack us they might eat us up okay so there are many exotic okay and often ridiculous ideas okay which are nurtured by the first world you know, practitioners of field based research that you should go and you will find all the disadvantages there you will be offered ants and cockroaches and food you will be offered uh, no look public toilet open pit toilet no no concept of toilet so you have to stay there and people don't be able to understand your language people may become hostile to you and you cannot do anything you should not do anything always do that don't do that don't you no know, guidelines are issued before the actual end visit okay this is essential you know a romantic and to a certain extent distorted notion of field based research okay because when i talk about field based research at gualto okay i think i should always do away with the notions of the first world academia about the nature and composition of the field here the field itself is ever present because okay many students represent okay different tribal communities okay there are students from santali community students from munda community students may be from bo community okay students may also be from khadia or lodha community so they are here okay maybe from pura community maybe from mahali community okay so students are here from different tribal communities indigenous community so when students themselves are part of the tribal community 
we enter into a new kind of ethnography okay which is known as indigenous ethnography or auto ethnography self ethnography so what you are going to do is to record your own world view your own philosophy of life your own language literature and culture so it becomes an exercise in self representation you are representing yourself so that is the point and when that happens you no know, it leads to community empowerment community empowerment because you are in a position to represent yourself and in order to do that you need to develop your skill in translation particularly in translation the students who are from santali mundari ho and other communities are already well versed in their own languages and i would appeal to all of you especially the students from the tribal communities okay, to be able to read and speak and write in your mother tongue okay. we have found in the university many students from tribal communities who are unable to speak or understand their own language so that should not be the case we know that there are certain issues a which impact this disconnect between one's mother tongue and one's acquired tongue the mother tongue and the other tongue we know there are certain compulsions of modernity we know there are certain developments certain what i should uh, call casualties of the development discourse which lead to the impairment of the tribal language community members which lead to cultural amnesia especially amongst the people from different indigenous cultures so this amnesia forgetfulness is bad for the future of the language so i would suggest that there is an urgent need to retain your command over your own language the mother tongue and in the department of english or in the department of hindi or even in the department of bangla so you can learn the other languages and why are the other language is important because they are important for translating the knowledge system embedded in your own language into these other languages and why is it important because bangla is the state language hindi is almost a national language and english is the global language so if you can master these language the other languages you can represent your culture your literature your language your folklore in these languages you are empowered you can represent yourself so this is something which is the ultimate objective of field based research the ultimate objective is to promote the concept of self representation the ultimate objective is to promote the idea of self empowerment community empowerment okay so the teachers and also the people from the other you know non indigenous communities the role of these people you know is to encourage and facilitate this process of transformation particularly the process of transformation in the minds of the indigenous community members i attended the sanbad sanbad is a tribal conclave conclave of tribal communities from all over the world i attended sanbad it uh, is uh, conducted every year in november at uh, jamshedpur okay, and this is uh, actually organized by tata steel tata steel organizes sanbad and i attended two three sanbads uh, starting from 2015 i found in those global conclaves representatives from africa 
presenting their own culture in very sophisticated English. Okay, you will be surprised to find how young generation men and women from different countries of Africa okay, address the gathering in very chaste and swear English okay, with proper clarity how they represent their own culture, their belief system, their knowledge system and the other evils in their society and their constant struggle to overcome the evils prevalent in their society. So if you look at you know these shows, if you attend these conferences, you will come to know okay, that how people who were earlier known as the denizens of the heart of darkness have now mastered the colonizer's language to such an extent that they can use it effortlessly in order to represent their own culture. So, what is our ultimate objective? Our ultimate objective was to drive out the English, but not English. There is a difference between the English and English. So, we have fought against the colonial rule, the English race as the colonizer. But we should not be against English, that is the language. Why? Because that language has become the lingua franca of the entire world. So we have to master that language. Ujjeru Nanukal was an Australian Aboriginal activist and a poet, great poet. So Ujjeru's father told her okay, to write English better than the white Australian. So that even the white Australians can appreciate the quality of your language. So attain that perfection, that excellence. Okay. So that is the struggle. Okay. The struggle is to decolonize the mind by removing the languages and cultures and literatures which are essentially not ours, which had to be mastered by us, but we should not have been the be all and end all of our world. The ultimate objective is to decolonize the mind and make it sensitive to the music of the soil. Jayache Matir Kachakachi, Tar Bani Shunigare Kam So that is the objective. Maje maje kechi ami opara brahmo ne bhai. Bhetore pravesh kori. Shri shatho chilo naayake. So that pada, that was the other world, you know, the indigenous world. Okay, but Tagore said it, but at the same time, Tagore attempted to interact with them, to mix with them. Okay, and there are many of his articles okay, dedicated to the Santa, okay, the Adivasis, the indigenous people. So, we find that field-based research is a new component which had already been introduced by the National Education Policy, NEP 2020, and in the new system, okay, you have to visit the field, okay, you have to prepare field-based project reports in your fourth and final year. Okay, there is a component of research. Okay. So this research will be essentially you know, field-based research. There will be maybe one or two alternatives, but I don't think it will be completely possible to avoid field work. Or say, it will be completely possible to avoid, what I should say, interaction with the community. No, outreach activities, okay, which are very essential. In fact, the entire idea of community-based research Okay, was to increase the social responsibility of the students, okay, which is also described as academic social responsibility, ASI, academic social responsibility. No, so that is very important okay, by the you know, policy, which uh, by the policy formulations of the NEP 2020. So it has come into existence. You are, I think. Some of you are already in the first semester. 
or maybe the first year, okay, whichever. So you are into the team system. So in your fourth year, you, know, you have to do you know, research which is connected to the community. Okay, so that is important. And this connection with the community will increase your you know, academic social responsibility. And the dialogue is essential. The dialogue between the students from the academia and the people in the margin, the people from different indigenous communities, the marginalized people. There is an urgent need to develop a dialogue. And many of you are already part of that margin. So it will be a dialogue with your own relatives, with your own neighbors. Okay, so renew that dialogue with a new spirit, with a new vigor, and that is the essence of field-based research. There were many other you know, technical issues like you know, different types of interview you know, and the importance of field diary, the importance of field notes, the importance of the field jottings, okay, and also the entire mechanism of ICT, information and communication technology. Okay, how do we use ICT in our field-based research? Okay, videography, audiography, and many other forms of you know, digital archiving. That is, most field there is okay, certain production processes which are essentially linked to ICT. So ethnography is a research method now acknowledged in English studies. ICT is also a research method now acknowledged in English studies. So we have many research methods in English studies now. Okay, so I hope you will be introduced to some of these research methods in your fourth and final year. Okay, so with these few words, I like to conclude my lecture here as I have already told you that there was a time constraint. So we had a long meeting and after that I had to curtail this lecture. Uh, I'm afraid to be may not be able to hold uh, an interactive session. Anyway, there is always the next time, you know, I can always visit and hold an exclusive interactive session with all of you. Thank you for listening to me patiently. Thank you. Thank you, Vigna, sir, for your interesting and enthralling lecture and your valuable and kind questions and it's now time for question and answer sessions that has already told that we are lagging behind the time so only one or two questions from the community or the student community yes. and, uh, in the meantime we have with us our IPC coordinator Dr. Kovacik Dei and requesting our students to facilitate him for so please Now the session is open for question and answer. Any question? different 
aspects of English studies and field based research will help you to join you know, many governmental and non governmental organizations. There is a huge scope. Okay. For example, you know, if you work on the documentation and translation of the folklore of your local communities, okay, you can always you know, apply for you know, the post of say documentation officer or translation officer in the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. Okay, I give one example. Okay, if you can develop you know, a sufficient database of you know, documented performance traditions of various communities, you can also you know, join any media, you know, print media, electronic media. Okay, there are now sections devoted to you know, local culture, local language, local heritage. In fact, there are many dedicated you know, journalists, field journalists, okay, who actually work with many newspapers or news channels, news agencies, okay, which uh, promote this documentation of local culture. And this is not merely confined to India. Okay, it's also okay, a kind of documentation that will connect you to many countries of the world. Okay, there are many countries outsource you know, cultural materials from other countries. For example, in the University of Cambridge, there is one global project known as World Oral Literature Project. And in that World Oral Literature Project, they have developed one website where many folkloric you know, societies from many countries can co-host their materials with the World Oral Literature Project. And for co-hosting you know, their own materials, for sharing their own materials, they are also you know, paid hefty. They are paid in GBP, that is British pound. So it happens that you can earn a lot by promoting and representing your own culture. Okay, there are many successful YouTubers okay, working on the documentation and representation of folk, folk cultures, folk performances. You will find it in YouTube. Okay, many are there who are independent you know, cultural activists, independent cultural activists. And they are a lot because it depends upon the number of subscriptions. If you have a lot of followers, large number of followers, you will definitely earn okay, a hefty revenue, a handsome revenue. It's always possible. So there will be great opportunities if you can learn the tricks of the field-based research. If you are familiar with different requirements of field-based research. Okay, there is a grammar. Definitely there is a grammar of field study. Okay, you have to learn that grammar. Okay, and for that, you already have your field. You are living in the field. You have to learn the grammar. How to document it. How to translate it. How to analyze it. And how to archive it. And as you know, new generation students as members of the Generation Z, you, know, you are very familiar with the devices, you know, the smartphones, uh, the cameras, and other you know, devices. So you can always use ICT on your own in the documentation of various performances. That is always possible. And that opens up a new horizon of you know, opportunities. Now it's time for vote of thanks. I would like to invite Dr. Kofi Dr. to the event. Good afternoon, dear students. Good afternoon, everyone. We come to the conclusion of this insightful and enriching session. 
I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to extend the vote of thanks on this session. On behalf of the English department, one regards and deepest gratitude to our honorable speaker, Professor Indroni Kacharya, for his highly inspiring and deeply motivating speech. I express deep respect for Professor Kacharya as he is my mentor, guide, teacher, and he is always affectionate to me. Your gracious presence and profound presentation have a magnetic strength. We especially our students are introduced to this new dimension of English studies. We will ever be more grateful to you for your kind consideration to make time for us from your incredibly busy schedule. Sir, I feel proud and immensely thankful for making this day truly meaningful for us. My sincere thanks to our respected principal sir, Dr. Amit Padikar, and respected teacher council secretary, Dr. Oshik Dey. They helped us in obtaining the necessary administrative approval for organizing this event. My special thanks to Professor Shankar Kumar Dey, who supported all possible manner to organizing this program. I would like to thank our respected head of the department, Professor Parupatul Chakravarti, for his constant help and guidance that radiated a source of energy within us. I need to mention my sense of appreciation for Sri Sohan Maiti, Srimadhi Srijata Dalgoti, and Sri Gautam Pradhan for their constant support to organizing this session. I am very much thankful to all our faculty, colleagues, and non teaching staff members who always stand up, stand by us. I thank all our students for their innovative and dynamic involvement they have shown and the willingness they have expressed. Thank you all for making this day most successful and have a wonderful day. At the last of this, I want to express some words for our sir. All we know that sir is uh, very much busy for his upcoming US trip. And we all wish from our department and as a whole family of SBSSM for a successful and most safe and also most brilliant trip at, in this US. Hope sir will return safely and again meet with us.